First off, I would never sign with a major label. I would never sign a record deal. Um, we live in a world, I was talking to my wife about this today, where if you don't have an audience, you believe there is a system to plug into where they can give you an audience. Um, record labels can't do that for you anymore. They used to have drivers. They used to have MTV. They used to have radio, which was important. The world is so fractionalized out now that everybody's in their own little bubbles listening to the thing that they're listening to, whether it's through TikTok or through video games or whatever it's through. Labels can, do not have their finger on the pulse of that stuff anymore. I met Matt Sanders in 2021. He's the lead singer of a heavy metal band called Avenged Sevenfold. We met in the middle of a bull market and it was at NFT NYC. We had a great conversation about the potential that NFTs had to really revolutionize the music making experience and connect musicians to fans in a direct way that was never before possible. Now, our conversation wasn't only about potential. His band was bringing real Web3 products to market and his fans were actually using them. Since then, the industry has seen its fair share of bankruptcies and turmoil amid the last bear market. And with that, many celebrities and influencers have fallen by the wayside. But Matt and his band have continued to build, and they even have four engineers on staff. Today, Matt tells me Avenge Sevenfold is forging ahead with their dedicated engineers to create long-lasting experiences for their fans that were not possible before. The band is drawing inspiration from pop culture and most recently launched a gamified fan experience inspired by Fortnite. Now, their free season's pass allows fans to do a lot of the things we talk about when we talk about NFTs. It allows fans to collect points, earn rewards, get merch discounts, access to meet and greets, and a lot more. It sounds like they've been able to crack the code. Now, when I talked to Matt, I wondered why other artists haven't followed suit how labels are responding to the fact that artists now have a direct lines to fans. Artists don't really need labels anymore. And if other musicians are picking up the phone and asking Matt how they've been able to build out this ecosystem. Matt says it hasn't been easy, but he also says he would never, ever sign with another label again. And Web3 technology makes that an opportunity and an option for artists like him. Let's take a listen. Matt Sanders, welcome to First Mover. Thanks for having me. All right. The last time we spoke, it was two years ago, and a lot has happened from a Web3 perspective since then. Uh, give me a quick rundown. What have you been up to? Oh, man. Uh, in terms of life, uh, I've been up to uh, putting out a record, going on tour, um, doing that sort of thing. And then in terms of Web3, um, you know, continuing to build off of um, Death Bats Club, which is our blockchain-based fan club, and then branching out into using Web3 native sort of um, utility, whether it's token gating with Ticketmaster or uh, being able to verify merchandise purchases and um, all these sorts of things, and then having even grander ideas um, uh, like a thing called Season Pass, which was kind of like a battle pass, um, which if you're familiar with video games, um, for musicians and artists, that all runs in the blockchain. So um, been doing a lot, a lot of building, busy. a lot of building in the, yeah, a lot of building. And um, now we're sort of uh, tweaking all the things that we've been building and seeing how they all play out in the real world. Well, Matt, when I think about musicians in this space, I think about you because you've been at it for so long. We see musicians kind of dabble, try out an NFT project, maybe in partnership with a company, but they do one project and they kind of move on. You've been at it for a really long time. You just mentioned a bunch of different projects that I want to touch on, but what keeps you around experimenting with Web3? Well, it was because, I mean, even if you look back two years ago, um, we always saw this as a technology play, um, whether, you know, Bitcoin does stuff really well, smart contracts do stuff really well, whether it's Ethereum or Solana. And it was never, ever about um, the price of the actual, um, you know, the currency that runs with these blockchains. Um, so when you're dealing with a lot of people, they see price go up, they want to get involved, they see it as a money play. We always saw it as a technology play. Um, so regardless of what was going on the last two years, um, nothing has changed in the fundamentals of what blockchains do and having um, a decentralized sort of um, approach or a uh, uh, like a more of a uh, 
a less of a corporate network um, and more of a protocol network of what we're trying to build never changed. So um, regardless of what was happening around us, um, all the noise, it just didn't matter. So that's why we're still involved because until the fundamentals change of what um, we're trying to build and how we're trying to bring artists closer together with their communities or whatever it is you're trying to do, um, if, if that didn't change, then there's no reason for us to, to move on somewhere else. It didn't really matter about the money. What are your friends or musicians in your network asking you about Web3? Are they interested in what you're doing or are they just kind of like you're doing that thing over there, you're experimenting with it, maybe when it becomes more uh, popular or more integrated into how we make music, we'll take a look at it. I think that might be the case. I think there's some people that are very interested, like the Megadeth Camp. Um, I know Slipknot's very interested. There's bands like Ice Nine Kills um, that have been dabbling and, and kind of un- trying to understand it. Um, the biggest thing, though, is the, the audience, right? Like, our audience, when they go to shows, the way they're treated, the way they get in with a thing called BitBadge that we have that is connected to your NFT, um, the way that they get in first to the venue, the way that they get, you know, meet and greets, um, um, done through a raffle through their NFTs, the way that you can scan merch live and have a meet and greet with us, basically winners on the spot, geo-targeted with, through Verify, through NFC tax. When our fans talk to us now, they can't believe they have to go to other artist shows and other artist sort of fan clubs and go back to that old way. So what's going to happen is those fans, eventually their voice is going to be heard in these sort of other communities. And the artists are going to have to pay attention. I think what happens, though, is when the artists talk to me or call me, they understand there's a lot of moving parts and it almost gets overwhelming, right? If you're talking about, um, you know, tracking plays through Spotify, through Last FM, or you're tracking, you know, the sale, the sale of NFTs and um, what do tokens mean and scanning merch and, uh, you know, airdropping ticket master ticket stubs it all of a sudden starts getting really overwhelming for them. And I think once that gets simplified um, or if they want to actually sit down and understand it, um, it takes a lot. So I think we're not quite there yet for that mass adoption of artists because a lot of artists, they don't want to deal with that. And the reason a lot of artists have been ripped off for centuries um, through the music industry or whatever it is, decades, um, is because they don't want to deal with it. I can totally understand how it sounds overwhelming, even just hearing about all of the different touch points you just talked about. If you haven't really heard about this industry before, you haven't really dove into the ins and outs, that can sound like a lot. How much time and resources have you invested in building out this infrastructure for your community? Um, Well, the band is, um, obviously we had a token sale, right? So that Mm -hmm. funded a lot, which is like kind of the Web3 dream right like you have like these people that own a part of the community they can leave whenever they want they own their tokens the community really is the one that kind of dictates where um you know the community goes and they dictate how great it is to be there and how much people want to be there and they do their own projects and this and that but they also have us which is like kind of the it's like a web 2.5 where the band has to you know fulfill their promises um, and the reason I bring this up is because there was a token sale and that gave us a lot of funds to really be able to put a lot into this, right? To build our team out, to have four engineers at all times working 100% on making this club better. New, um, you know, perks, perks is not the right word, but new functionality, right? Bringing new sort of ways in to track the user and to reward them on whether it's season pass or through the Death Bats Club. Um, keeping people out on the road to be able to be their kind of liaison to like, oh, I'm not getting my tickets and have someone run up there and take care of that person or their bit badge isn't working and having somebody there knowing that they're a part of the community and working through it. So, um, but we expend a lot of our time and money to make sure that these things are working correctly. Um, I would say when I'm not on the road, I wake up and it's all I think about. You know, like I, I, I'm constantly on with our, with our team and we're constantly trying to solve problems. We're constantly trying to make things easier. We're also constantly talking to other artists and trying to help them kind of um, bring them in and get them in a position where, you know, how do we explain this to our fans? How did your fans take it? How do we start up, set up a discord? How do we do roles? How do we, 
you know, how do we do what we're, you're doing? So it, it's constant. I mean, I wouldn't even be able to give you a, a true time frame because it's, it's like all I think about really. It kind of sounds like you want to create almost like a template that other artists can can use based on your experience and based on what you've built. It sounds like, you know, maybe there's a startup on the side of the band that helps other musicians do what you're doing. Is that the direction you're thinking? Well, it's a hundred percent. We're we're crazy people though, because we want this <laughs> to be, we want this to be so artist friendly that it's very hard to call it a startup because what happens then is all these weird rules and money becomes the driving factor or at least it has to at some point become this thing where you can fund yourself and you know i've had conversations with people at universal records i've had conversations with every basic basic entity and they all go oh you should take on vc money and build this thing out and it's very anti what we're trying to do um so what i would say is we are trying to build the railroad and the tools that allow other artists to come in and use it in the way that they feel is right for them. And, but they own everything. And there could be like a small fee where we're, you know, charging, you know, per user based on the data usage or certain things. But I believe in this, keeping this very web three centric to where there's no sort of sign up record deal. We get your stuff. We're holding, we're, honing your data in, we're doing this and that. We don't want any of that. So it's a very hard, I've had so many VC people come to us and we're just very, we're very allergic to that. So we're just really trying to make sure that this stays as pure as possible and that the artist actually is in control of their own destiny. Is there any tension uh, when traditional labels hear about what you're building or do you anticipate there to be any tension between labels and artists when this becomes more mainstream? There's, there's, I have a lot of people that I know at labels that have called us. There's a lot of people at labels that I know have not called us and have been told to figure out what we're doing and do it. Um, listen, this technology, it's open source. You can see what we're building, right? I believe that we are going to have such a great, um, situation for artists that they can roll right in and they can use what we're using and, and they could, and they're, they're going to spend less with us than any other deal they're going to get in because of our, our mentality and where we're at with this, right? What we're trying to do. Um, but I do know that labels are going to try to do the same thing. I know that NFTs and blockchain is now getting put into new label contracts, which is scary, right? Um, the whole idea here is so that the, with season pass, the whole idea is that the artist owns all the touch points and the ingestion points of what their fan is doing. Right now, the way it works is if you're on Spotify, we, we don't let the artist know who you are. We own your fans. We can reach out to them when we want. If you're with merch companies, it's the same way. If you're with the record label, it's the same way. So the artist is basically struggling just to get information on who's listening to them. The person that's wearing your t-shirt is also the person buying a t-shirt and listening on Spotify. Why can't the artist interact with them and be able to communicate with them? What we're building is a way to do that, but it's very uh, anti what the industry is right now. So what's going to happen is a record label is going to try to do the same thing, but they're going to try to own it, right? And then they're going to hold that piece and they're going to hold it over the artist's head and go, we're, we still want to put you in a crappy record deal. And we're going to own that piece because we feel we built your career. And we're saying, no, that's not, that's not how this should work. So it just, it definitely gets tangled up. Um, it's very, it can be um, very um, mean spirited or money driven. And we're just trying to be the guys that are showing people the light. It's really interesting that you said NFTs and blockchain are being inserted into label contracts now. And you said that's terrifying. I mean, I think so too, right? NFTs and blockchain are trying to solve, um, a critical challenge that's been existent in the music industry for a really, really long time. And by adding it to contracts, it's not really solving anything. What advice would you give uh, artists who are coming up in the industry who have that clause in their contract? Um, first off, I would never sign with a major label. I would never sign a record deal. Um, we live in a world, I was talking to my wife about this today, where if you don't have an audience, 
you believe there is a system to plug into where they can give you an audience. Um, record labels can't do that for you anymore. They used to have drivers. They used to have MTV. They used to have radio, which was important. The world is so fractionalized out now that everybody's in their own little bubbles listening to the thing that they're listening to, whether it's through TikTok or through video games or whatever it's through. Labels can, do not have their finger on the pulse of that stuff anymore. Labels take 75% of your money to give you enough money to record a record, and then basically you're on your own. But you are beholden to the 75%. First off, you make back that advance at a rate that's one quarter of the money, right? So now you're making back the 200,000, 300,000 it costs to make your record, but you're making it at a quarter of the money that's actually coming in. They, they, they are flailing as much as anyone else. The reason the major label still exists is because they have catalog and catalog is what Spotify and Apple Music all need to rate make their streaming services run. So they were given equity in these companies. I would say never, ever, ever sign a label deal if you don't have to. You can get distribution for free worldwide by going straight to Spotify if you want to go that route or Apple Music or Tidal. So what I was talking to my wife about was that, but we live in a world where you run home to your family and you say, I got signed to Universal. I got, my grandpa understands what that is and they feel like you made it. You didn't make it, right? That's just step one of now getting ripped off for the rest of your career. So I don't, and maybe I sound cynical about this, but I've been through the record label process. We will never sign a record deal again, right? Um, so I don't know what to tell artists other than use the new tools for the future of the internet. Use, like, you don't look at any of these DJ signing deals. They don't need to. They have audiences built into this club scene, whether it's going to EDC or doing all these things. They fly around, play their shows, play multiple shows a day. They don't have record deals. They don't need radio. They don't need MTV, right? It's all word of mouth. That's the world we're living in now. And you see them embracing blockchain more than anyone. You mentioned video games there, and I do want to talk about your season's pass uh, for a moment. It's really kind of gamifying the fan experience. Talk to me about how it works. Yeah, I think um, if you look at um, how video games have adapted to the new world of the internet, they've done it incredibly well. If you look at how much money, if we want to talk about financial, how much money video games make by making their games free. They realized that the internet was going to make everything free. Um, you were going to be able to get games any way you wanted, but they adapted and they said, okay, well, aesthetics, um, experience, um, skins, um, concerts, culture, right? They, they basically went all in on what the internet does well and they have figured out this system where I can play the game for free and have, have nothing to do with that. But I want to look cool, so I'm going to buy some skins here and there, and now I'm in the game and I'm with my friends and I'm doing this sort of thing. And the video game industry has just like skyrocketed in terms of, you know, money made in this industry. Um, so what we're basically doing is taking a, a page out of the gaming book and we created, um, you know, Season Pass, which is almost like a battle pass where if you're going to a concert and you're going to three shows a year and you're buying a bunch of merch on our website, all of these points, basically called checking in um, on your wallet, are being added into this tally that will reward you with things that you want to be rewarded with straight from us, whether they're collectibles, demos, um, merch discounts, um, meet and greets, free tickets to shows, all these sorts of things that we are rewarding the biggest fans and we are enabling them to want to keep participating in this community. Um, and so, you know, we have about five or 6,000 people signed up right now, but we are getting into that. I think it should be higher, but right now, you know, we are backfilling a lot of old merchandise from the summer. And until that's all done, um, we're not going to promote this thing um, until we want to make sure there's going to be less chaos when people go, I bought three shirts at this show and I don't see my points yet. And then and we're like, okay, hold on. Because the one thing I've figured out about the internet is you can say something till you're blue in the face and you will still get somebody 20 seconds later that will ask the exact same question, um, especially in Discord, right? I see people, I see our mods trying to help people and then like literally it will just explain something for 10 minutes and then the next person comes in and asks the same question. <laughs> Um, so it would be nice that if we can backfill everything and then we have one sort of 
Q, uh, you know, frequently asked questions. It says, if you, if you got merch at this point, you have been backfilled your merch and this is where you get it. So once we do that, we will um, kind of really go wide with this thing. I think this is the future. I think there'll be tweaks to it. I think every artist can kind of roll in and do their own version of it. It's, it's not a one size fits all, which is so beautiful, right? You're dealing with artists, let them create their own ingest points. Where What do we want people to be rewarded for? How many points do we want things to be weighted out, right? Um, it's super exciting because you can really, um, you can ask for fan um, opinions. Uh, you can do things one way and then after a season, you can change it and do it a different way. Um, you're not really locked into anything other than your own creativity. Matt, I have to ask you, you know, a big challenge for a lot of folks who are building out Web3 communities is this engagement part, right? There's a lot of conversations that are being had about how to incentivize engagement and some of some of the solutions that are being tried now when it comes to like gamifying the experience and rewarding points and, and perks are some of the things that you're talking about. But are you finding it hard to keep your community engaged or have you cracked the nut because you've you kind of came into this with a community that is already very passionate about the music that you make. Yeah, I feel like it's not fair for me to really comment on how do you start from the ground up. Um, I feel like, you know, if we go back to 2021, um, that's what the Bored Apes did, right? And they did it incredibly well. They, they started with something that was nothing and they created a community based around these ideals and the future of what um, the internet could mean with blockchain involved. And then sevenfold, the reason I felt it was so, uh, so much a no brainer was that we were already coming in with an audience and all the web three aspect was, was a cherry on top, right? You're taking this super um, loyal and engaged fan base. And now you're giving them a place and a reason to want to engage more. You're, 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 um, you're giving them this almost digital handshake with each other. You're, you're, you, you have a, a, like a meeting spot, which is the Discord. And then you've got these tokens that show the loyalty, but also the rewards and the, and the ability to, to get these things. So now you're taking something and you're putting gasoline on it and you're setting it on fire and you're letting it just run wild, um, which is why all my early interviews, I just said, this is a no brainer for people with an audience already. Now, building from ground up, is incredibly hard no matter what industry you're in. Starting a, a clothing brand, making shoes, doing whatever it is, incredibly hard. Um, and, it's, and it's even harder in Web3 because what, what happens is you get these people that are circling the casino and they all want to um, use your project as a casino. And you have to kind of keep that out if you want to be taken as a serious um, sort of thing, right? If you want the casino, then do the meme coins or do whatever, right? Which is fun too, but that's not really, you know, what this is. Matt, tell me just before we wrap this up, how long do you think it's going to be until every artist has created a community that is as incentivized as the one that you've created and is using the technology to help enhance their community's experience? One thing I've found about technology and you know, I'm only 42 years old, but I've seen these things happen a few times. Um, I was listening to an interview today where someone was talking about how in 2009, there was still a bunch of people that were very skeptical about streaming. I'm always going to buy a CD. I'm always going to support the artist. And, but at that time, you could clearly see that was not going to be the case. But there was a lot of people that were the, um, the audience that was dead set that I'm never going to sign up on Spotify. I'm never going to do streaming. And we see how that played out, right? So it's almost like there's that, that saying where it's like, it's, um, this, this isn't getting it right at all, but it's like, there's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, there's like nothing and then all at once, right? It just happens. Um, I don't know when this, when this happens exactly. Please don't, please, please don't, that's too much. I don't know when this happens all at once. Um, but it will happen all at once at some point, and it could be three years from now, two years from now. Um, but there will be people like you and me will see it happening at a level where there's like, we're gonna feel like there's a lot of artists, but it really hasn't meet that, met that mainstream adoption. Mm -hmm. And then one day there'll be like, you know, your mom has a cell phone and knows how to use apps, right? Or, or um, 
it just happens. And then all of a sudden, everyone can't believe their life without applications on their phone or without using Google Maps. Um, that could be 10 years out, uh, but we'll, we'll probably be seeing it, you know, two to three years out. Matt, thanks so much for joining the show. Thank you very much for having me.